Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Neha Tahir, resident pharmacist at Shifa International Hospital. Those who are our regular members, uh, I welcome you all again. And those who have joined us for the first time, let me take you through a brief introduction. Pharmacy Department of Shifa International Hospital holds free CE webinars each month to promote and enhance the learning among pharmacists. We are happy to have you today. We have done a large number of sessions till today, majority of which were disease oriented and revolved around clinical expertise. But today's CE session focuses on hospital pharmacy practice, challenges and strategies to overcome those challenges. As you all know, hospital pharmacy practice plays a vital role in ensuring the safe and effective use of medications within the healthcare setting. However, this field is not without its challenges. From ever evolving treatment protocols and medication management systems to complex regulatory requirements, hospital pharmacists face a range of obstacles that require innovative solutions. I believe that today's session will help you gain really valuable insights into hospital pharmacy practice, challenges faced by hospital pharmacists and help us develop effective strategies to overcome them. Let me now introduce our speaker for today, Sir Faisal Aziz Sandila. Uh, Sir Faisal is a pharmacy graduate from Gomel University, D. Ihan. He has over 22 years of vast experience in hospital pharmacy services that include inpatient department, ambulatory care, clinical, compounding, which includes sterile, non-sterile preparations, take-home services, and supply chain management. He also did MBA in health services management from Shifa Tamir Millet University, Islamabad. Sir Faisal has served at almost all positions in pharmacy department. I would like to invite Sir Faisal. Assalamu alaikum, sir. How are you doing? Wa alaikum assalam. I'm hopeful. Uh, I'm audible and uh, very thank you so much. Yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, okay. We are looking forward to a great session, sir. Uh, without Inshallah. any further ado, shall we begin the session? Yes, we can. Okay. Let's start then. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Neha, for this uh, intro and uh, giving opportunity to shed some lights on uh, hospital pharmacy practice and some challenges being faced on a day-to-day basis. And I will be sharing some strategies how to overcome that. So next one hour will be a great session. Uh, we can have a true input picture of all these hospital pharmacy practices. So I'll start my presentation with the name of Allah. Uh, these are the contents we will be covering. Uh, we have introduction of standards indicators. Uh, we will be covering uh, Punjab Health Commission survey, some scoring techniques, uh, management of medications, then some intro about Joint Commission International. Their main chapter is medication management and use. And lastly, we will have some discussion on challenges and strategies to overcome and uh, FIP perspective in terms of pharmacy in Pakistan as well as internationally. So these are the brief contents. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce about the uh, this topic. As you know, the fundamental basis of any reference standard is the improved patient safety and quality of care. We all know being in healthcare industry in a hospital, patient safety comes always first. So the fundamental basis of any standard should always be focusing on patient safety and quality of care. The standards and indicators, these are always dynamic, reflecting the constant development of healthcare treatments and protocols. So they are not static, dynamic, as per need based. These can be evolved and over a period of last 20, 30 years, everything has got changed and patient safety has come on the top priority of every institution. And Alhamdulillah in Pakistan, uh, that dynamic uh, approach has been acquired and we are pursuing that. Uh, these benefits both patients and healthcare establishments to promote safe environment with managed risks. We all know in a hospital, uh, every time we are dealing with such kind of risks. So by introducing and following these standards, we will be trying to have a promotion of very safe environment and uh, managing those risks. 
So today we will review Punjab Health Com Healthcare Commission, Pakistan and MMU of Joint Commission as an example. Although there are lots of, but these two will be covered today. So what is PHC? It was um, showed in 2020-10, the government of Punjab, it promulgated the Punjab Healthcare Commission Act 2010, which is now in place and very successfully going on in Punjab. So its vision is to promote the high quality and safe care delivery for all. As we know, the statement vision is a high quality patient care. And what is the mission of that PHC? It's to continually raise standards of healthcare quality throughout Punjab, Pakistan. So mostly these PHC standards are followed in Punjab, but we can take as a reference standard and get occupied these things, practices into any other areas institutions as well. So the origin is derived from 1500 Joint Commission International Indicators, and these can be found in review of some Australian, New Zealand, Indian, or even UK and Canadian standards. So PHC has been derived from those best practices standards already West is doing. So uh, nothing new, but in Pakistani context, they have reduced considerably in number with scope in local Pakistani context to ensure a realistic approach. We all know that things get done very slowly on slow pace. So in Pakistani context, PHC has modified these and uh, we will be following few of them, especially kind of medication management. Uh, what is the definition in healthcare regarding standard and indicator? I want to highlight this, that a standard and indicator has some basic differences. Likewise, a standard can be defined a set of specific concise statements which act as a markers of high quality, cost effective patient care across a pathway or some clinical area. And these are derived from best available evidence. Means these are policies, these are standard guidelines, statements which should be followed in true spirit. And what is their indication that standard is being met or not? Those are called indicators, which are the established measures used to determine how well an organization meets the needs as per requirements. So there is a difference. Standard is a written document. Indicator is those measures against which that standard is measured that these are being followed or not. So hope I am uh, clear about that. So we will be discussing both these terms in next few slides. Uh, the best practices include we all practicing pharmacists are obliged to ensure that the services they provide to every patient are of appropriate quality. So it is obligation on us being a hospital pharmacist that every patient get that service to of that appropriate quality. Uh, we have to meet that. And good pharmacy practices is the clarification of that obligation. If we are not doing so means we are not doing good pharmacy practices. All appropriate quality things is our good pharmacy practice and we have to meet this. Practice is best when it follows the specific guidelines. So we are talking about specified guideline standards, which in terms improve the patient and medication safety. So we were talking about Punjab healthcare standards and indicators. So there are several example, responsibility of management, because uh, I want to clear as well, medication management is not a job primary, uh, pr although primary job is with pharmacist, but other hospital management, nursing, physician, everybody has a part into it. So just like responsibility of management is involved, facility management and safety, human resource, what kind of people are being getting in, getting out, Information management system is very important, how the things are being triggered down, you know, manual things have gone and now is the time of IT infrastructure. Continuous quality improvement is always on the basis of some data. Access assessment and continuity of care is very important. Uh, care of patients and medication, management of medications is MOM, PHC main. We will be discussing in next few slides, patient rights and education, and last hospital infection control. So these are the main standards by PHC against which there are several standards. So today we will be focusing only on management of medications. Actually, there are 30 professionally developed foundation standards against which 162 indicators have been derived and they are in practice at PHC. So we will be discussing only MOM. So uh, the survey process and scoring, just for the um, clarification of the audience, the survey process always requires full understanding of processes, policies, procedures against those indicators. So it means whenever you have to survey uh, area, institution, any hospital, so you must have a thorough knowledge of the processes and standards against which you are going to audit that area. The scoring is have in three portions. 
means fully met, partial met, or not met. Fully met means the practice is meeting the standard, means fully met as per standard, you have observed those indicators and there are clinical reference evidences being observed and found. Partial met means practice is partially meeting the requirement and needs more focus and attention to fully met, means it might have some further improvement to get into fully met and not met as the name indicates the practice is not adhering to the standard means what is written is not being observed and it is uh, not up to the mark so these are the three conditions phc is following fully met partial met or not met so first mom1 management of medication one standard it states that policy and procedure exist for prescription of medications so very clear we all know being a hospital pharmacist there must be a prescription for drugs so that we can review and dispense appropriately it this uh, mom1 has seven indicators the 51 to 57 is as per their uh, number serial number according to their uh, phc act so 51 states that documented policy and procedure exist for prescribing of medications so there must be a policy who will write who will do what all procedures must be in written form second one says the organization formally defines who can write the orders means there must be a definition that by virtue of experience privileged consultant physician medical officers they must be mentioned in those policies that they can write the orders next orders are written in uniform location in medical records means the file recording is very important to have a uniformity and access to all healthcare professionals next is the medication orders are clear legible dated time named and signed means the order is clear means if our handwritten you we all know we are dealing with physician doctors the order must be clear so that any ambiguity must not be passed on to patient that can cause a, a harmful effect it must be legible so legibility is mostly uh, being addressed by the help of uh, your online ordering something like that dated timed and named and signed as well so these are very clear instructions standard is stating so any deviation from this comes under that survey that they are meeting or not so indicator 55 state that policy on verbal order is documented and implemented means there was to be if any uh, avoidable cases are there we know scenarios happen when verbal orders are being uh, given to the healthcare professionals being nursing so verbal order policy must be documented and written and how and when it can be exercised 56 states that the organization defines the list of high risk medications high risk medications are those high risk medications which have very low therapeutic index for example heparin uh, chemo medications insulins because any over or under dose can have a direct harmful effect on the patients so the policies must be there for dealing with these high risk medications and indicator 57 states high risk medication orders are verified prior to dispensing it is our prime job being a pharmacist we have to verify what orders were what was the dose what was the route so that we can clarify and verify those orders before dispensing so mom1 is totally about the prescription of medications mom2 it states about policy and procedures guide the safe dispensing of medications very clarity once prescription is being written according to those standards how dispensing can be done so it has mainly four indicators from 58 to 61 58 states that documented policies and procedures guide the safe storage and dispensing of medications we all know being a pharmacist storage is very important and storage aspects are to be met to get the uh, therapeutic outcomes against every medicine we are dispensing so storage is important 59 indicator states the policies include a procedure for medication recall recall means whenever uh, authority internationally locally drap fda even company if any item is recalled there must be a process policy that how that can be dealt so it should be written indicator 60 states expiry dates are checked and documented prior to dispensing very easy things expiry dates very important we have to verify because the expired items once dispensed those might have a chance 99.9 percent to get administered by patient themselves or nursing so expiry dates are checked and documented indicator 61 states labeling requirements are documented and implemented by the organizations 
it is important for us that whatever you are dispensing, it must have a proper label. Mostly we have uh, uh, printers uh, involving on those labels. If, if these are being done by some manual, proper indication information must be uh, standardized that this label must contain patient name, patient uh, dose, drug, group, everything must be a document. So labeling is very important because one medication cannot be replaced with any other one. So these are the four basic crux of dispensing of medications. So now we are moving to MOM3. MOM3 is the standard 10, which states there are defined procedure for drug medication administration. So you might have seen that uh, management of medication involved physician for prescription, dispensing for pharmacist, and now is the third year nursing. Because we three trica are involved and we are, have to work together for the patient care. So this has 10 indicators from 62 to 71. 62 states that the medications are administered by those who are permitted by law. It means the nursing or uh, whoever is being authorized, they must be mentioned as per the law. Mostly uh, nursing is doing that and they are registered with the uh, Pakistan Nursing Council. So by law, they are uh, registered to get the drug administration. Next is prepared medications are labeled prior to second drug preparation. You know, we are mostly dispensing the vials in the uh, not in ready to administer form. So these must be prepared medication. For example, ABC antibiotic is being uh, used um, um, admixed by a nurse. So she must mention over there a second label that it drug, it, this drug is reconstituted in this one water and now further diluted as per the physician orders. So labeling must be important for those uh, undiluted drugs. Third one is patient is identified prior to administration. If you have two same name patients, for example, if the Har Ahmed, uh, two patients are with you, so you must have identifier, two identifier, kind of uh, his or her unique MR number, something like that, so that one drug should not be uh, administered to another patient. So patient must be identified properly. The medication is verified from order prior to administration. It is very important. Nurse must verify the uh, drug as per orders because if a drug is uh, ordered, and is being dispensed from pharmacy, he or she must verify physically that a drug is in his, her hand and uh, he or she is going to administer that. Next is dosage is verified, very important dose. If a drug has 100 milligram and patient dose is 50 milligram, he or she must consider that I am administering only 50 milligram, not the full one. So that's why we being a pharmacist have to focus on uh, ready to administer forms or the drugs uh, which have less calculation errors. If a drug comes in 50 milligram as well as 100, for 100 milligram dose, we have to give 100 so that one tablet rather than 52 tablets. If 52 tablets, uh, 50 milligram two tablets are being given, there are chances that uh, nurse may omit one um, tablet to uh, administration. So there are chances of that. So dosage is verified. Route is verified, very important on which route this drug is going to administer. Timing is verified. All these rights are very important and nurse is the prime responsibility for doing these. Medication administration is documented. Whatever has been administered, it must be documented that I being a nurse have administered this drug at this time so that documents can be reviewed and patient prognosis and all uh, healthcare related activities can be reviewed. Uh, second last is regarding to MMO3, policies and procedures govern patient self-administration of medications. You know, in Pakistani population, there are patients who said that I am very much trained. Please give me the drug to uh, myself. I have to administer these. So patient self-administration policies and procedures must be mentioned, which drugs can be or which cannot be. Are uh, self-administration is allowed or not allowed? Very simple. Last but not the least, policies and procedures govern patients' medications brought from outside. Very important. In other words, we can say that patient own medications. So there must be a rules, policies of those, how these will be dealt and how these will be recorded in uh, administration within an organization. So all these MOM 1, 2, 3 involve about medication use, starting from prescribing to dispensing till administration. So very simple, simple information it can be followed at any level. This was about Punjab Healthcare Commission. So now moving towards Joint Commission International. Joint Commission is the world largest healthcare accreditor based in US. 
it is considered the golden standard, as you can see on the right, it is a golden seal in global healthcare these days. More than 1,000 healthcare organizations in over 70 countries have achieved the golden seal of approval as JCI accredited organization. Joint Commission is very safely promoting all these uh, patient safety related matters. In Pakistan, Alhamdulillah, following institutions have got the JCISC, including Aga Khan since 2006, Alhamdulillah, Shifa National Hospital since 2017. And we've also got Ishipa Home Care Services since 2020. And it is one of the um, one of the best and only in the Southeast uh, Pacific, uh, uh, South Asia region. There is no one health and um, dealing in Ishipa Home Care Services. And lastly, Shogut Khanam is also uh, accredited, uh, specifically it's Lahore as Red Peshawar. All these institutions are joint commission international accredited. Uh, the item according to this is MMU, medication management and use. As we have studied from uh, MOM of PHC, so similarly MMU has seven things, organization and management, selection, procurement, storage, ordering, preparing, administering, monitoring, rather some uh, expanded as far as PHC's context. So these seven chapters are very important for MMU standards and we have very quick around. What is stating about organization management? It states that the medication used in hospital is organized to meet the patient needs. Whatever kind of patient are coming to any institution which is JCI accredited, the needs must be met. For example, that service is available and patients are getting those services. Complies with applicable laws. Applicable laws means these standards, draft rules, narcotic rules, everything. What are the law of the country, law of the land? We uh, have to follow those regulations as well. And it is under the direct and supervision of a licensed pharmacist. Means a pharmacist is leading this medication management chapter within that organization. So organization and management first is very uh, generic wise and institution wise chapter. Second was the selection and procurement of drugs. So we there must be a process for medication normally available in the hospital, you mean hospital formulary. So there are pharmacy and therapeutic committees. These are responsible for the selection of products to be part of hospital formulary. Next is there must be a formulary of medication readily available, means the healthcare professionals, doctors, nurses must have access to that so that they can easily get the information and uh, they can prescribe according to those formulary. So they uh, need not to have uh, here and there, you know, uh, these days, social media, everything is available on your cell phones. The hospital formulary medication must be readily available and accessible to all healthcare professionals. There must be a method for overseeing medication use in hospitals. Overseeing use means whatever drugs are coming, are we getting any drug, uh, adverse drug reactions according to that? Are these being in movement as per the required standards, as per the therapeutic outcomes, as per the recommendation by healthcare practitioners, as well as input from pharmacists and nursing. And last, uh, indicate that the list is reviewed at least annually. Standards say that this hospital formerly list and medication management use must be reviewed annually that over last year, what kind of drugs you have added, what kind of adverse reactions were reported, what kind of recalls were there, why were added, why not added, uh, are the physicians satisfied with the formulary within that organization. So these are the points related to product selection and procurement. So moving to next third one, storage, very important. Medications are properly and safely stored. These are the standard requirements. So safely stored means if an item has a light sensitive issue, you have to keep it very safe. For example, you can see the uh, zipper bag, at least we are using at Shifa, these are the brown amber color zipper bags in which any light sensitive medication can be stored. And till administration, it is being kept within this pouch. The medication storage areas, including nursing units are periodically inspected means uh, only the drugs are not available in pharmacy. There are areas other than floor stock, nursing, trash carts. These are periodically inspected. Period may be monthly, fortnightly, or quarterly. It depends institution to institution. Then medication and chemicals used to prepare medications are accurately labeled and contents expiration dates and warning. For example, any item having uh, reconstituted item have a stability after opening. So they must contain all those information on outer packs. There must be a process for sample medication storage. 
By the way, these storage five requirements are particularly mentioned in Joint Commission MMU chapter. So I am talking about these. Sample medications must be a uh, proper controlled and dispensing according to uh, policy. So sample medication cannot be kept outside uh, pharmacy or in doctor clinics or in uh, nursing areas or patient bedside. There must be a policy just like that any sample medications if needed can be routed through pharmacy and being a uh, part of patient profile as well. Uh, emergency medications are available, monitored and safe and stored out of pharmacy means anything out of pharmacy emergency medications, we can say uh, the uh, crash cards, which are being available and these are being monitored by pharmacists. Ordering and prescribing very important. It includes transcribing by the physicians, transcribed by healthcare professionals. Usually ordering and transcribing are different. Mostly consultants, um, big um, uh, doctors, they usually as per practice, usually verbally order are on a main file. But in systems, their junior doctors, MOPGs are transcribing. So these must be error-free. Manual as well as online prescription can be done. Illegible medication prescription jeopardize patient safety. We all know illegible medication orders have lots of lots of issues. And Alhamdulillah, in Pakistan, now culture is being on that CPO is on computerized physician order entries. Although it has some different bugs, but illegibility issues have been curtailed off very much, and uh, those uh, errors uh, have been minimized. Alhamdulillah, the important information must be included. It means doctor must give important information, which is on the right side. It is an ideal prescription. It always, a prescription has a three um, uh, checks. One is patient related. Second one is uh, drug related. Third one is physician related. If all these three informations are present in any kind of prescription, manual or online, then this is called a complete prescription. Uh, patient related means its name, MR, diagnosis, height allergies. Then drug related, dose, route, duration, directions. And last, physician date, sign stamps. So whenever these components are filled, our prescription is said to be a complete. Once it is complete, it comes pharmacist role for preparing and dispensing because these must be in a safe and clean environment, including aseptic techniques, the trained pharmacist prepares and dispenses. the medication order are reviewed for appropriateness. I want to share that completeness is the responsibility of physician, appropriateness as per drug dose frequency administration, yeah, therapeutic duplication, drug interactions, this is the prime task of a pharmacist. So to facilitate review, there is a record in the pharmacy for all medication administered, uniform medication dispensing at right time to the right patient. So these are the core tasks being done by a pharmacist within hospital, whether he or she is dealing in inpatient or ambulatory care. Some dispensing tips like we have to perform the appropriateness review. We must avoid the distractions. Distraction means you are dealing with patient, you are receiving calls. So one task at a time. Please fill that, then move to another. The distraction have potential for errors. Fill one drug at a time. Not all drugs could be filled at the same time because there are chances of mixing. Read the drug, not the bin. Whenever you are put, pulling out of drug, uh, picking from the rack, read the drug, not the bin, because bin might contain a wrong medication being uh, stacked by any junior technician. And double check is very important. We must have a filled by check by signatures on all those dispensings. Administration. You know, the flow is very being maintained. The drugs are organized. The drugs are being uh, selected. And these are being stored, ordered, dispensed. And uh, sixth step, uh, step is administration. The hospital identifies the individual by GDs and privileging the process. You can compare these seven things with the uh, Punjab Health Commission MOM. All these are being written as per the Joint Commission standards. There must be a process to get verified the medication against prescription, those route and time of administration. The nurse must get these and documentation of those records. You can see the five hours are very medication safety. The right drug must be given to the right patient, the right dose, through right route and at the right time because of, if a drug has not to be given at that time, he or she must not. And if it is documented, then next preceding nurse will be in a position she can handle the shift. You know, a nurse is not doing job 24 hours. He or she is dependent on that document. So these documentation must be very of appropriate. And last is monitoring. Starting from uh, patient related things are some system monitoring. 
So patient monitoring means medication effects on patients are monitored to evaluate some patient illness, renal functions, liver functions. For example, if a patient is having fever, pain, vital signs, you must see that upon medications, the fever is being reduced, pain is being reduced as per the analgesic being given, vital signs are not disturbed after this medication. If a lab antibiotic, creatinine, serum drug level, INR for heparin, uh, warfarins, these things are to be monitored patient-related wise. So these are specific things to the patient and uh, system related means ADR, AD is reporting some data compilation of all those uh, reports so that necessary corrective and preventive measures could be taken and monitoring of the effectiveness of those tools being incorporated to reduce those errors. Near miss is very important. Near miss example, if a error, uh, medication error has occurred but that has not uh, got out of your hand that you have picked at your own pharmacy, your own system. So these are near misses and these are preventable medication errors and must be documented. Very important tool to avoid medication errors. So this is the uh, MMU monitoring thing. Uh, these were the practice standards. I have talked about PHC and MMU. Now hospital pharmacy challenges and some strategies. I'm hopeful these will be uh, uh, important things to learn something strategies how we can improve. So key challenges a hospital pharmacist is facing on daily basis. Uh, you might be agreeing to me, too many desperate resources and outdated information across the databases. This is an issue. We have increasing specialty medications and awareness of specific patient population needs. There are these days very much increasing specialty wise things. Demand for multitasking is very important and is in demand. We have to do a lot of things at a time. And last, human and financial costs of medication errors. So these are the main key challenges a hospital pharmacist is dealing on daily basis. So a few strategies we can how we can mitigate and overcome. Uh, consider the authentic drug information resources, just like up to date, like Z drugs, no XYZ rank things, only authentic information must be uh, referred to back. We have to update our knowledge to get those increasing specialty medications so that we can learn and educate ourselves as well as the doctors, as well as the patients. Uh, demand for multitasking is there, but one task at a time always have better results. Multitasking doesn't mean you are doing uh, four things at the uh, same time, all will end up in a mess. So one task at a time is a very fruitful thing. We can follow that. And human financial cost means rational use of drugs medication errors, whichever we have uh, studied before that, uh, how we can improve these things. Common challenges internationally, I can share with you nationwide internationally, these two targets are very much challenges, staff shortages, as well as changing attitudes toward work. Uh, day in, day out, we are dealing these. So how the staffing shortages can be minimized, appropriate staffing, HR budgeting, forecast as per service expansions. It is very important because appropriate staffing means if you need a staff as per budget, as per service, you must be given. Overstaffing is also and understaffing is very much dangerous to the organization and there are financial viabilities, other impacts over to that. So staffing shortages must be properly executed and uh, expanded as for your services. And changing attitudes, attitude towards work can be materialized by flexible mutually agreed rosters. Example, if you are in some inpatient and uh, you have some um, tasks at morning and you want some evening duty, so mutual agreement can be done so that you will be mentally fit to do that job at that time. But it is mutual, not only one. If a person is asking always a fixed duty, you know, and that is not being uh, um, possible all the times. So mutually agreed rosters can be accommodated. Staff facilitations should be there. Employee engagement session. Employee engagement means they should be got some uh, sessions, some uh, workouts, some um, uh, CE sessions. Anything can be a part of engagement. Even a, a trip of any organization of that department can be a part of employee engagement, so that he can be get some towards better outcomes. Motivational talks can be given by some uh, good speakers. Uh, we have to being senior led by example. So all these challenges are being met and uh, overcome through these minor things.
work related burnout and stress is a very important and uh, we are dealing day in day out it led to workplace burnout due to number of factors including the expanding role of pharmacists as you know the research, recent research internationally is showing that a larger role uh, of prescribing medication conducting screenings providing information about diagnosis and treatment a pharmacist is getting these kind of tasks as well internationally these additional responsibilities along with projected shortages of nurses physicians and other staff will likely find pharmacists with an overwhelming workload so pharmacist is being involved in that that internationally these practices are there so for to uh, release this burnout and stress i am recommending you to read uh, doing what matters in times of stress you can note down doing what matters in times of stress it is a very good who stress management guide for coping with adversity so these are the who Uh, address you can uh, study it uh, it is a very quick and uh, once you go through it you will find very simple practices which you can do and avoid these burnout and stresses of your uh, during work day uh, what are the who guidelines on stress uh, i can pick one example grounding it states that when we are stressed we find it hard to engage in life when you give your full attention to any activity we say you are engaged means if you are not engaged if you are not focusing it means you are not paying attention and something error could be happening if we have to unhook that what we are when we are hooked by the thoughts or feelings we are disengaged and distracted so this grounding and unhooking must be at same time once you are in pharmacy once you are on duty please get out of your home thing and something like that you have to pay attention to your patients your uh, doctors your nursing whoever you are dealing with once you can learn to be more engaged and focus then you will handle the stress better so it's matter of engagement that how you are focusing these uh, some tips we have to work with purpose we have to perform a job analysis and eliminate or delegate unnecessary work all the things cannot be done by me neither by my boss neither by everything we have to delegate things to get the main outcome we have to give to others all the things are not with me we have to take control and actively manage your time and get more exercise as well so that you could be a physically fit we have to learn how to manage stress so these are basic small tips we can utilize even one or two can be in practice you will uh, see some tremendous changes uh this was the financial recovery you know finances are very important many hospitals are struggling post covid even billions of dollars have been lost hospitals have to cancel more lucrative services which cannot be um, um, feasible viable to all those covid surges even supply chain and pricing issues are very much time spent and we are trying to find some alternates so here are some six strategies to navigate financial things we have to understand cost anything being received in your hospital in your institution in your pharmacy and it has a cost so you have to take care of that it doesn't means that hospital is bearing and it has no impact on you you have to understand that you have to optimize clinical space and other high cost resources if a space is very much lucrative you can minimize that and it said that don't be penny wise and pound foolish very important Uh, example states that a lowering cost doesn't mean cutting cost across the board for example consider investing in resources like a scribe to help to clinician with notes for example we have to add a resource for uh, clinicians as a scribe clinician can do this at his or her own so we have to be very much careful in making the decisions address the economic realities of virtual care these days virtuality has been on and most of the things are being done from home build a new primary care strategy and business model to compete in the new world we have to change and adopt the new strategies according to we cannot live with the uh, primitive conventions things and we have to learn how to take on real risk means when to take the real risk so that we can have outcomes telehealth very important it is a forefront allowing patient easy access to the healthcare providers a recent report shows 90% of the patient utilize the patient portal to adapt to and chronically access their medical information now is the time most people are using this tally health as a tool just uh, i can example uh, we had shifa e shifa is our tally health and we are having lots of services for example we have home pharmacy home nursing home vaccination home physio 
home diabetes care program. A lot of things are being done. And you can just log into this www.eshipar.org and get involved into that. Even home pharmacy services means a qualified licensed pharmacist is reviewing those prescription and dispensing uh, the drugs to your home. So drug pricing and shortage is very important. Uh, I was studying today that even West um, uh, top of the drugs are very being short in America, Canada, and other areas. These are the very uh, crucial and we being a hospital pharmacist within Pakistan and Islamabad, we are dealing it day in, day out. You can see the drug prices continue to go up because the uh, inflations are in economical situations. Uh, supply chain costs represent the second largest expense for hospital. So supply chain is very uh, directly related with the hospital benefits and employee benefits. So we have to cut down those and we have to try to develop strategies around purchasing decisions and stockpiling means expiry management, debt stocks, all those inventory related matters should be taken into consideration to avoid uh, high cost and dead inventories. Uh, recently, DRAP is working on it and they have raised a letter issued 14 to 20% drug price rise so that the drugs could be uh, made available. If a company is not um, uh, viable, uh, its financial costs are very much high, so they cannot produce. And once they are not producing, they are not distributing, the drugs are short in the market. So uh, the drugs needed must have a suitable price raise. So DRAP has a, a good decision recently to raise the 14 to 20% of few categories items. And we must have to go for a safety stock if we are doing that some items are very life-saving and any item is going to be uh, short in next few uh, months or something like that we have to keep safety stock so that your patient or uh, customers cannot be suffering we must optimize the stock utilization whatever hospital formulary is being made we have to get a very intelligent decision for that utilization as well and review the process on regular basis means once decision being made in January should not be done so that it is continued till July. We have to review again and again and revamp the things as per uh, current needs. Technology and automation is very important. We have to continue to drive us into the future. US market, by the way, for automation is expected to grow exponentially and its automated dispensing cabinets will be growing from US $7.9 billion by 2030. So it is a one of the study that they are doing most of the things by automation. So automation, as far as hospital pharmacy is concerned, we can have a patient safety through safety alerts, for example, dose alerts, drug interactions, allergies, you can name, and uh, your uh, infra IT can support in giving those alerts for patient safety. We must have a clinical flags and reminders that this drug is going to be short or a clinical pathway, something like that for the medication patient safety. We must have a better tracking and reporting of consultations and diagnostic testing as well. And the clinical decision support services are very important, critical. Uh, although many institutions have got internationally and in Pakistan, we are in that phase to have those clinical decision support services. It is important clinical decision services, with the help of IT with the involvement of doctors, that whenever this kind of indication, the drug should be automatically dispensed, the lab should be monitored, pharmacist role. So all these clinical decision coordinated efforts needed uh, patient data for the patient safety. And last but not the least, barcode QR scanning for uh, exact uh, to avoid medication errors. Cybersecurity, it is very important. We uh, have to rely on the cybersecurity as healthcare expands, like telehealth, electronics, the risk of cyber attacks grows exponentially because system based, if anything goes down, so all those hacking, something like that, cybersecurity is very important. Nine ways to improve cyber. I'll quickly go through uh, cybersecurity trainings on staff, apply software updates very intelligently controlled access, there must be a regular risk assessment, discourage the use of one password for all the system, the data recovery should be there, security in depth, and protection of mobile gadgets. So these are the few tips which our IT department or any IT department should follow easily to avoid those cybersecurity threats. Compliance to policy and procedure and monitoring, we being all humans have to comply the policy to get those standards and indicators and all services and best practices obligations. As new technologies and medications emerge, 
in pharmaceuticals so we'll have new regulations as well and compliance to these is challenged all the times you know if a procedure and um, um, practice is standard has to be met the person dealing with that has to follow into that and spirit if not then uh, the indicator and uh, your standards will not be fulfilling we have to document policies consistently apply your policies and procedures we have to remove barriers to compliance very important most of the time we cannot understand how uh, what is getting uh, of our non compliance there must be some barriers there must be barriers of training there must be barrier of some understanding or if an issue is not considered as an issue as a problem statement that cannot be improved so the barriers must be analyzed and uh, these must be removed reinforced with training all the way you know turn around uh, retention is not especially nursing doctors they are coming day in day out so we have to train all new staff and um, already retained staff must have a training on regular basis we must stay current with ever changing laws and make sure all employees are following those procedures so all these things are very uh, dynamic and once being compiled the standards are being met medication errors uh, you can say a medication error is any preventable event that may cause or lead to inappropriate medication use or patient harm while the medication is in the control of healthcare professionals so it is a preventable things which is in the health in the hand of healthcare patient professional consumer so according to national coordinator concern of medication error it is a very extensive definition and by this you know us fda is uh, receiving more than 100000 reports each year associated with medication errors and these serious harmful results include death life threatening situation hospitalization disability or even birth defect as well so medication errors must be reported so that root cause analysis can be performed and necessary preventive actions could be taken it is not a fir it is a simple medication error reporting so that it can be dealt appropriately to avoid next medication error uh, these are uh, some tips we have some drug safety alerts drug safety communications medication guides drug safety culture is very important as i have said uh, i have used the word fir most people think that if i will write any error uh, the question with me with me no there must be a non punitive uh, culture uh, there are organizations and they are directly uh, firing that individual whoever is reporting something like that so that culture must not be uh, encouraged there must be a non punitive safety culture so that you can get the uh, insight of all those errors being done and get some preventive steps to avoid future medication errors five rights must be followed by the nursing medication reconciliation procedure must be on means whenever a patient is coming to hospital what he or she was getting at home and once he is getting discharge he or she is getting what kind of medication were uh, given during admission and what are being uh, their discharge so reconciliation is very important to avoid any duplication and omissions the double check verification procedure must be there read back to another professional read back means read back is always you have to listen you have to write down then you have to spell out again this is read back and if you are listening and repeating back that is repeat back so there is a difference between read and repeat back then name alerts uh, leading and trailing zeros you can see 0.5 does does have a meaning but 1.0 not not 1.0 is one so trailing zeros must be avoided the proper documentation and compliance to procedures so these are few 12 pretty things we can evolve to reduce the medication errors ismp is uh, clearly stating this is the recent their uh, guideline you can see on the left side we have a system reliability and a human reliability so human reliability is always least effective we cannot rely on humans that i have told you you will do that no we have to make some systems most efficient and hardest to implement we can understand hardest to implement but these are the real challenges we have uh, rules policies educational available information but uh, these have low leverage medium minor standardization redundancies warning alerts but high leverage is forcing functions barriers and fail safes automation and computerization so this third one is on top priority although difficult but it has very fruitful outcomes so institute of safe medication practices is uh, uh, asking us 
to do and improve your system reliability. Transforming Global Pharmacy, you all know FIP, International Pharmaceutical Federation has some development goals launched by the uh, FIP in September 2020. These are actually a key resource for transforming the pharmacy profession over the next decade globally, regionally as well as nationally. So overall, it has very uh, important things. They align with FIP's mission to support the global health by enabling the advancement of pharmaceutical practices, sciences, and education. Means they are not dealing only for Pakistan or themselves. They are doing it globally. So you uh, must be uh, very glad to see that we are pharmacists is the third largest healthcare professional workforce in the world. So after physician nurses, we are the third largest healthcare professional workforce. But unfortunately, in Pakistani perspective, you can see more than 40,000 pharmacies, but they are having only 5%. 95% pharmacies do not have pharmacists uh, directly doing jobs over there. We know all these realities happening around. So uh, some strategy recommendations by FIP. Uh, strategies, advanced and specialist development. There must be a service provision, workforce education and training. There could be done. Uh, continuous professional development, uh, as we are doing this is C session, we are sharing some thoughts with you, getting ourselves educated as well. So continuous professional development for pharmacists is very much important internationally. It is the annual requirement for re-registration should be made requirement. So these are the things which can be helpful for getting um, good health for, for uh, hospital pharmacy practices. Equity and equality means more opportunities for women in pharmacy. Uh, we can also understand that equality is there, but mostly female males, both are giving and must be given equal opportunity to uh, uh, work in within the organization. It should not be like that. If you are a woman, you cannot do that job or not. So equality is very important. And last is leadership development. We have to advocacy to the public and healthcare professionals. Whenever a management leadership understand those things, they he or she must advocate that these important realities and healthcare professionals must coordinate with each other. So this was something about FIP. Uh, there was a survey report in Pakistan by FIP person. It was an um, informal uh, Facebook um, blog uh, questionnaire feedback, how pharmacists are doing, how pharmacy services are doing that. So I have uh, picked this survey report and it has uh, recommended few strategies and uh, options so that we can look about. Example, policy development, the Pharmacy Act, Drug Act, Pharmacy Council of Pakistan, all these three exist within Pakistan, but these are need amendments. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I have uh, heard a few weeks back that Pharmacy Act 1967 amendments have been approved by Senate and uh, might be uh, in near future, it will be passed from uh, all those legislative things. So that Pharmacy Act must be encountered with uh, recent practices as of 2023. Uh, 1967 is very old one. The Drug Act 1976, uh, true letter spirit, things must be followed. And Pharmacy Council of Pakistan must play its role in terms of pharmacist registrations, pharmacist renewals, all those matters must be followed in true letter and spirit for policy development, academic capacity, the curriculum design. You all know annual semester base from the students are getting all those things. So curriculum design must be as far as the recent good pharmacy practices are concerned. Uh, no theoretical knowledge can be a good if it has not has uh, application. So uh, practical as well as theory, both must be aligned to each other. Earlier career training strategy, internship residency programs must be there. So this report is recommending these things. So Alhamdulillah Pakistan is doing uh, lots of things around as uh, we at SHIP are doing uh, an internship offering as well as residency program as well. So competency development for the clinical skills of pharmacy profession. So these four uh, main strategies and recommendations were given in that FIP survey report. And uh, we, if we discuss, follow all those things, the things can be of good for pharmacy profession. So these are the few recommendations from FIP. According to WHO, there is a projected shortfall of 18 million healthcare workers by 2030, mostly in low and lower middle income countries, means in Pakistan as well with most countries shall be a socioeconomic issues and difficulty in education, employment, retention, and performance of their workforces. So this is being given over there. 
how we can uh, avoid that, acknowledging that there could be no health with the healthcare provider access to healthcare services, and we have to enable equitable accesses to educated, trained, and distributed workforce. The for workforce must have a proper distribution that uh, which person is doing what jobs. And to meet the health and pharmaceutical needs of society, our workforce can only be developed to apply its knowledge, skills, and abilities as a part of multidisciplinary team. I can I always am forcing again and again on you that physician, pharmacist, doctor, nurse, everybody has to play their role. Even within an organization, a facility management is very important. Multidisciplinary team can have those pharmaceutical needs and patient safety. So FIP has pledged that it calls on academic institutions, professional organizations to make uh, around the world to increase academic capacity, to identify emerging need-based competency development area, to establish alliances between universities and professional organizations, and support the development of CPT program. So FIP pledges, as far as uh, Shifa and we are concerned, we are trying our level best to achieve those things to get a better outcome and better uh, workforce for uh, medication and in terms of patient safety. So summary of my uh, presentation is we have to follow the best practices. These will be following the standards and compliance. As a healthcare professional, the pharmacists play your part for medication safety and the challenges do arise, but strategies can be adopted to avoid and mitigate these. We all know challenges are always there, but we can find ways how to mitigate these and move forward. So these are the few of the references of my presentation and Jazakumullah khair. So now we are open for some question answers. Thank you very much. <clears throat> yes, Ms. Neha, do we have questions? Thank you, sir, for facilitating today's session. It was an enlightening session. I learned a lot of new things, and I will definitely be keeping these principles in mind throughout my professional outlook. Yes. Uh, sir, should we take the questions now? Yes, 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 you can. Okay. Sir, there have been some multiple questions about lucrative services. If you can answer that. Yes, lucrative services means we can avoid such kind of things uh, which can be avoided and uh, a kind of service which is not needed anymore. So you can live without um, those services. Uh, example, any um, uh, hi-fi uh, doctor related things or something like that. So we can avoid those things. <clears throat> Sir, there is another question that how frequently inspections are done usually in hospitals for nursing units, emergency rooms, etc. Um, as far as uh, periodic is concerned, it depends on area to area services. You can have a monthly inspection at least. And if the volume is very high and you have the support, you can do it uh, um, fortnightly as well. And if uh, someone is asking about joint commission or PHC inspections, so these are the uh, accreditation requirements. For example, JCI accredited for three years. There are triennial inspections. <clears throat> um, sir, a participant is asking about the significance of a compounding pharmacy that why is it better to dilute re and reconstitute medications by a pharmacist? Yes, uh, we have to avoid the mental maths being done by uh, nursing and because uh, this is not her or his primary job. A pharmacist knows better uh, what is the suitable diluent and what are the concentrations. So ready to administer and compounded bags have very important uh, significance. Uh, it will uh, enhance the patient medication safety and uh, will allow nurse to focus on her prime task for patient care rather than he or she is making the drug and administering and making some errors. Uh, sir, can you please explain about clinical flags? Clinical flags means they are clinical pathways. Uh, whenever uh, an error is happening, so uh, clinical drug support services uh, do have some flagging system so that that particular area of physician or pharmacist can uh, be uh, flagging and act upon. So these are the flags uh, because uh, these are reminders to you that you have to um, um, get into it and uh, resolve the problems. 
Okay, these are some great questions, but I think this would be the last one. We won't be able to answer all the questions. So, yeah. uh, sir, uh, there are multiple questions about uncontrollable medication errors, what they are. Uncontrollable? Medication uh, errors. Uh, preventable medication errors. Right. Yes, these are the preventable medication errors. Mm -hmm. uh, I have given you two examples that uh, near miss is uh, error when you have caught it. Once you are uh, double verifying, order was of 20 milligram and you have this you are uh, dispensing 40 milligram and you have caught at your own upon uh, double verification this is your near miss and it is preventable but you have to document that so that if that error is repeating so you can work out that if it was a fault of individual or it was a fault of that packer who is uh, who or she is uh, some issues in stacking the drug something like that and any preventable errors from physician pharmacist or nursing. It includes prescribing errors, it includes dispensing errors, it includes administration errors. So these are preventable because if we follow the rule, if we follow the six rights, if I being a pharmacist follow the appropriateness in terms of drug dose route, uh, physician follow the completeness, then these errors will not happen. So these are called preventable because these are in our hands. And if we do not follow, do not concentrate, pay attention at time of doing our job, then these errors have a drastic harmful effects on the patients. <clears throat> yes, Ms. Neha. Uh, sir, let's take another question. It yes. talks about the double check verification process, what it is and yes. how it is done. Yes, yes. Double check verification means uh, one order has been reviewed by a pharmacist. It, it is preferable to be reviewed by another pharmacist or a healthcare professional on duty. It could be a pharmacy technician. Double verification means you have to verify whatever was ordered is being dispensed to the nursing or patient directly. So two checks are there. If I am a person, as we all know, uh, in conventional medical stores, if a prescription is received by me, you know, a purchase is received by me in stores and I have read it, I am going to pick that drug and I am dispensing, that is not a double verification. You have to get it drug uh, reviewed by a person and second person must check and tally against the prescription and the bill as well. So that whatever was ordered is being dispensed. So this is called double verification. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the session. I think Thank we'll be doing, doing with okay. the questions. Okay. Unfortunately, we cannot answer all the questions, but uh, those who want to uh, forward their questions, they can forward it on drug.information at the rate .pk. And for the participants, in order to claim your certificate, don't forget to fill out the post-session feedback forms, which will be sent to you via email uh, to the all registered participants. And after filling the form, you will receive an electronic copy of the certificate later within two weeks. And uh, you can go through this session again, as it will be uploaded on our YouTube channel as well by the name of space underscore SIH in a couple of days. Uh, okay. Our next session will be on 23rd June. So if you would like to join, then uh, keep up with the updates. And lastly, I would like to thank everyone for joining us. I hope that it was as illuminating and informative for you as it was for me. I would like to close today's session with the thought that develop a passion for learning and you will never cease to go. Thank you once again. See you next time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.